Hi, this is John McMullen, and I'm introducing a, a lecture that I'm, I'm giving at Marist College uh, in the CLS program, the program for, for seniors, on one of the most important people in electronics in the 20th century, Vannie Bar Bush. Now, now Vannie Bar Bush had a, had a varied background, made major contributions in, in many areas. He was the Dean of Engineering and Vice President at the Massachusetts Institute of Technology. He was one of the founders of the Raytheon Group. And he was the science advisor to President Franklin Roosevelt during World War II. And in that capacity, he oversaw two of the most important developments in the 20th century. The Manhattan Project, under which the atomic bomb was developed, and the project at the Moore School of Engineering in the University of Pennsylvania that led to the development of ENIAC, the first working electronic computer. So he had a, a major impact in a lot of areas, but surprisingly perhaps, what he is best known for is an article that he wrote in the magazine in 1945. And one of the reasons that I'm using this platform is I'm going to be reading, uh, perhaps hopefully, hope, hopefully not to bore you, from a paper that was written, or, or that I wrote for other purposes, on the development of what I consider to be the most important technological innovation in the last 50 years, the development of the World Wide Web uh, and the graphic browser. It's hard to believe that the graphic browser has been around for less than 20 years, and it really did not come into common use until 1995 to 1996. In that short time, it has changed how we gather information, how we shop, how we pay bills, advertise, keep in touch with family and friends. In short, all of the things that we do. It's also brought us some negatives, perhaps, well, the electronic communication has led to surveillance that we hear about now, uh, uh, that shocks many of us. It's also all of, all of the help to consumers, where we're able to pay bills online, we're able to, to shop online, has led to a, an elimination of jobs in other areas. That is part of the normal innovation or creative disruption that I've, I've been writing about for a long time. But that was not the intention of the World Wide Web, whether it was, whether it was Bush or anyone else. It was, it was to gather information and to make it available to everyone. As with most innovations, the graphic browsers didn't just fall out of the sky, but was the confluence of years of thought and, and with hardware and software development. Throughout the history of scientific progress, many innovators and science fiction writers have seen things as they should be, or as they will be, long before the technology was available to implement the actual process. Perhaps the most famous is Leonardo da Vinci's drawings of, of submarines and flying machines long before the technology existed to make these things viable. Well, the idea that became the World Wide Web originated as World War II was winding down. Two great discoveries, as I mentioned, had come out of uh, World War II, the atomic bomb and the ENIAC, both, development on, both developed under the government funding, by the way. The ENIAC development set the standard for future major computer system development. It was late, and it was over budget. It, it was actually finished after World War II ended, and, and the idea of it was to help track gunner trajectories during the war. But, but while that was the reason, those involved realized that the computers would have uses other than those related to the military. One of the developers, J. Presser Eckert, supposedly envisioned that 25 of, of these computers could satisfy all the business needs of, of the United States throughout the end of the 20th century. I can underestimate the tad. Uh, my iPhone does much more power than the ENIAC, and I don't run many businesses with it. The more prescient view was put forth by Vannie Bush in a July 1945 article for the Atlantic Monthly, 
as we may think. Uh, Bush saw computers as tools that would help and aid humans in research. Probably the equipment all wrong because he was because he was dealing with what was available at that time. He envisioned typewriter type devices. He envisioned storage on microfiche and, and uh, on microfilm. But his idea of a computer that had access and could retrieve all possible information that one may need became the basis for what we now know as the World Wide Web, uh, Wikipedia, Google Search, etc. Bush also pointed out that we think and want information in a different way than we read. We think in an associative fashion. We jump around. When we read, we read in a linear fashion from top to bottom or from start to finish. But for instance, if, if we were reading an article on Bush during World War II, we might see the name Franklin Roosevelt and, and jump to find out more about him. In the, in the information about Franklin Roosevelt, there might be reference to Pearl Harbor or to Eleanor Roosevelt. And we would click through or we would go through to read that information. Then we might come all the way back to Roosevelt, or come all the way back to Bush. But it's up to us how we gather information. If we were reading an article today, for instance, about President Obama's desire to bomb uh, Syria, the article might talk about his relations with Congress. It might it might mention the geography of Syria. It might mention who the rebels are, and then the article would end. If we were reading the article and it was designed for the web, many of, of these things, John Boehner's name, President Assad's name, the map of Syria, might be hot, as it's called, and we could click on it, we could go off there. So, Bush gave us the basis for this. Bush's, Bush's theories were further refined by, by Theodore Holm Ted Nelson, who in 1964 coined the term hypertext to refer to material that went, that went deep rather than long. And what I mean by deep is that we can go through some, some phrase, as I mentioned before, and we can go to more information. So if you wanted more information about Syria, it would, it would be my example. Uh, that term was later expanded to hypermedia as video, then audio, and graphic files became available on computers. Nelson began began work in 1960 on the system which he called Project Xanadu to bring his ideas to fruition. And he's still working on it. Uh, it, it really got, got pushed out of the way when uh, a Brit named Tim Berners-Lee working at at the particle physics lab in Switzerland, developed the basis for the World Wide Web. Now, it was called the web then, but you had to be a computer person really to know how to use it. The big breakthrough came in 1993 when a graduate student at the University of Illinois at Champaign-Urbana, Mark Andreessen, and with his team of graduate students, developed the first graphic browser. And, and the present web was born. That graphic browser, uh, Mosaic, gave way eventually. It was the parent of, of Netscape's Navigator, of Microsoft's Instant Explorer, of Firefox, and, and eventually of Chrome and of Safari. So that brings us up to where we are now. And then now we will explore some other aspects of Bush's life. Uh, the paper that I just mentioned, and links to to Bush's article, which everyone should read that's interested in in this subject, uh, will be will be part of the rest of the discussion and available online. Thank you for your attention.